Hello again, and welcome to section three of Econ 311. Right. So we continue our discussion on consumer theory. And here we are looking at equilibrium of the consumer and look at application of consumer theory. Right. So um, this is the section overview, which is basically looking at how equilibrium is attained and some applications of consumer theory. Right. In terms of the outline, as you can see, they are listed over here. We'll look at corner solution, application of consumer theory, and go through derivation of individual demand, consumer theory and income elasticity, price consumption curve, and the angel curve. The learning outcomes at the end of the day um, would be um, a knowledge in all the areas that we have listed above, that is in terms of determining equilibrium of the consumer, deriving individual demand care. So I will not belabor the point by going through all the pointers over here. We still are using, utilizing chapter four of PELOF, which is a microeconomics, right? So in terms of um, the consumer reaching equilibrium, we know that the consumer does not have unlimited resources, right? So we have a situation where Lisa has preferences and based on her budget, we can determine her optimal bundles, right? So as we indicated in section two, the point of equilibrium would be the point where the budget line is tangent to the indifference curve, which is where the slopes of the two curves are the same, right? So in our corner solution example I indicated, this individual would prefer to pick point E where she is consuming only one commodity instead of the other based on the types of commodities available to her. So let's look at a scenario where we have a preamble where Nigel and Bob have the same taste, right? They are both indifferent between a sports utility car and a luxury sedan. Each has a budget that will allow him to buy and operate one vehicle for a decade. For Nigel, the price of owning and operating an SUV is greater than that of a car, right? So for Bob, an SUV is a relative bargain because he benefits from lower gas prices and can qualify for an SUV tax break. Right. So using indifferent scales, how will you analyze this? Right. So one has a strict preference for one commodity and the other the same. So when you look at this, this will be the budget constraint, right? the indifferent scale, sorry. This will be the indifferent scale for Bob. Right. So for Bob, this is his indifference care where he has a strict preference towards SUV because she can get a tax break by using SUV and low gas prices. And then for Nigel, he, he will obviously go for a car, which is a sedan. Right. So when you look at this, based on the budget available to them, which is a budget line, we can tell that Nigel will buy the sedan and then Bob will buy the SUV where they are both settling at the corners of their indifference curves because both of them, I mean, in terms of strictly looking at their preferences, they would go in for one than the other based on the advantages that one commodity comes with. And in this scenario, we are looking at the car, really. So here, when you look at a strictly concave indifference curve, we have established in um, section two that a consumer would always settle at a corner, right? And then when it comes to this concave and convex indifference curve, it becomes a bit tricky. The consumer would always go for the highest utility, and that is point E and not point D for this consumer who faces this, I mean, peculiar in different scale. So in terms of utility maximization, 
this consumer would want to maximize her utility subject to a given constraint. And the constraint is a constraint imposed on her by her income and the prices of the goods and services available. So here, if you have a scenario where an individual has this utility function, u as a function of x to the power 0.5, y to the power 0.5, and then she has an income of 800 Ghana cities. The price of X is four cities and the price of Y is one. How can we find her optimum bundle? We can find her optimum bundles of both goods by using the Lagrangian function, which I know you have been introduced to in your mathematics class, right? So we set up our Lagrangian function where L is a function of the utility plus a certain beta, and this is the expenditure constraint, right? Income minus what? The price of X times the quantity of X purchase minus the price of Y times the quantity of Y purchase, right? So if the consumer is neither saving nor borrowing, then it means that at the end of the day, this will be equal to zero. The budget will be exhausted. So we find the first order conditions where we differentiate the utility function, the L, with respect to X, right? And here we get 0 0.5 X to the power minus 0 0.5 multiplying Y to the power 0 0.5 minus beta multiplying the price of X, which is what PX. We set it to equal to zero because we want to look at um, the limit of the function. So we do same for um, y, and then we differentiate the function with respect to lambda, and we get the expenditure here, the constraint here, which is equation three. So from equations one and two, if we want to find beta, beta is equal to all that, 0 0.5 x to the power minus 0 0.5, y to the power 0 0.5 divided by that. And we do the same for equation four, All right? So when we rearrange it, we see that we get y to be equal to px over multiplying x divided by py, All right? So this is equation six. When we substitute equation six into equation three, which is the constraint, we get this expression, All right? Then we simplify and substitute the values. So this is our x, our x is i over 2px. We have uh, predetermined values of i and px. So when we do the substitution, we know that the optimum bundles for x will be 100 units of x and 400 units of y. This is the equilibrium bundles that the consumer will consume. So the maximum level of utility, this is the utility function, right? And we know that it is what? U is to the power what? U as a function of x to the power 0.5, y to the power 0.5. So we substitute the values and the maximum utility is 200 that the consumer can have. So that was maximizing utility subject to a given constraint, right? Maximizing utility subject to a given constraint. We can also similarly minimize expenditure subject to a given utility, right? So we are doing um, two things. Um, but the results should not be different. So here, we minimize the expenditure, which is P1X1 plus P2X2, subject to all this constraint, which is a utility. So we subtract all this from the given utility, which is a constraint we have. And when we take the first order derivatives, we get these sets of equations. So on your own, take your time and do the differentiation. You see that dk dx will give you p1 right here, right? And then when you come to the utility function, you see that x, this, um, the 0 0.5 will multiply. You take one from it, and then you get minus 0 0.5. So take your time and go through. You get equations one, two, and 
three. So we do a series of manipulations, right, based on equations one and two, and this is our utility function, right? We equate both of them, and then we try to find x1 and x2, okay? So based on that, we do um, a series of manipulations, and then our x2 is now up1 to the power 0 0.8, and this is our Hicksian demand for x2, right? Our Hicksian demand is a demand curve we derive when we minimize expenditure subject to the budget constraint. So here too, when you substitute the values that we have found in the utility maximization, your results should be the same. So on your own, I want you to try it. Right. So in terms of how we derive the consumer's equilibrium, let's go through that. It has to be basically through changes in price, right? So here we have an indifference curve between beer and wine of an individual gill, right, who consumes beer and wine. So the point of equilibrium is at E1. So when the price we are de uh, trying to derive the indifference, sorry, the demand care for beer. So when the price for beer is at 12 um, CDs, we'll see that $12, sorry, we'll see that Gale will purchase 26.7 um, gallons of beer per year. When the price increases, right, we'll see that Gale will do what? What is happening? The indifference curve will shift inwards, right? So Gale would rather consume less of the beer, right? So we we'll see that with that, um, the individual would consume less of beer when the price becomes more expensive. That is at point E1, right? So at point E1, he is consuming 26 when the price is at 12. When the price drops to six, he is consuming 46.5, 44.5, sorry. So you see that consumption increases with a, de a decrease in price. So when that um, process continues, you see that consistently the consumption would be increasing when the price of the commodity falls. And that is what has happened. We plot the price against the quantity, and that gives us the demand curve that Gill would have, which is the demand for beer, which is your typical downward sloping demand curve. Okay. So closely related to that, we want to look at the price consumption curve, which is a line that goes through the optimum bundles of prices of the goods for beer and the prices of wine, right? So here we want to see, and related to that also is the angel's curve, which is a relationship between the quantity demanded of a single good and income. Right, so we want to see how the individual changes consumption when the income of the individual changes. And here too, um, in terms of the income consumption curve, it shows consumption of both goods um, changing when income changes. So out of the income consumption curve, we derive the angel curve, which is a relationship between the quantity demanded of a single good and income holding price constants, right, holding price constant. So here, we want to look at a scenario where there is a change in the income of this individual, right? So here, the individual started at point E1 with income. This was, these were the quantities of wine and beer that he was consuming, right? So when you look at the gallons of beer, at income level Y1, right, he was consuming 26.7. When income increased, right, the budget line shifts outwards, the new equilibrium level is at E2. At E2, how many um, gallons of beer is this person consuming? Remember, the price is not changing. So the price remains at 12, but he is now consuming 38.2. So you see a shift in the demand curve to point E2. 
Right. And that process continues when income increases further, he will increase consumption. And when we come to the derivation of the angel curve, we are looking at the income against the gallons of beer that this individual has consumed. And you can tell that the higher the income, the higher the satisfaction. And this is your typical, you have the higher the consumption, sorry. And this is your typical normal good where you increase consumption when income increases. So it's an upward sloping angel's care. Right, so basically that is it for angel care and for the demand care, right? In terms of the relationship between consumer theory and income elasticity, we know that elasticity is what? The percentage change in quantity over the percentage change in income, which is income elasticity. And when we simplify, this is what we get. So this is for income elasticity. So here, if we want to have a scenario where if a 1% increase in income results in a 3% decrease in quantity demanded, the income elasticity of demand, um, we know we can find it. And that will be what? 3 over 1, which is minus 3. Right. So basically, we are trying to tease out the relationship that exists between um, income and the elasticity of goods. Sorry, income elasticity of goods and consumer theory, basically. Right. So income elasticity is useful in identifying the type of good we are looking at. So if it is positive, then it means that when income increases, the consumer increases consumption, and that is a normal good. And an inferior good, you know, is a situation where when income increases, you consume less of it, so um, it becomes inferior to you. So for income consumption curve, we know that for a normal good, it will be an upward sloping what income consumption curve. But for an inferior good, it will be a backward bending income consumption curve. Why? Because here you see that when Gail has more money, when her income, his income increases to Y3, look at the consumption. He is now cutting back his consumption of all other, sorry, he is now cutting back his consumption of hamburgers. So hamburgers become inferior to him as his income increases. And when you trace those points, you see that you get the angel curve, which is a backward bending angel curve, showing that the upward section within that region, hamburgers were normal goods, but the moment it begins to turn backwards, it means that the consumer is consuming less because they have more income, right? So hamburgers become inferior to him. So basically, um, that is it for this section where we have looked at consumer theory, which is equilibrium of the consumer. We have looked at the price consumption care, the income consumption care, and the angel care. I want you to, in response to um, changes in income, we can establish, it is established that the consumer change their consumption behavior. Discuss how a good can be both normal and inferior to the consumer, right? So based on the knowledge you know, discuss this concept. Um, within which segment would a good be normal and inferior to a consumer at the same time? Thank you and enjoy reading.